so as you were studying economics, uh, before we get to the post-Soviet stuff, I do have one question about access to reading people like Milton Friedman, or maybe not, maybe that's probably a little bit too extreme, but like, let's say Samuelson or something like that. Yeah. How did you ever get to read these people? How, did, how were you able yeah. to learn something more about Marcus? Okay, uh, probably it's a good uh, moment to just to tell a little story about how I uh, was writing my thesis, some kind of the PhD thesis, uh, thesis on economics, um, uh, and how I used uh, the stuff that you were mentioning, or such type of stuff. All these uh, foreign economists were not... Uh, not only av available, they were strictly forbidden. It's, you could not find it. It's just you could not find neither in the library nor in the bookshops. Just they did not exist at all. So, um, and if you're a student, you don't need to do it. You, you just need to go to the library and to read uh, Karl Marx or Friedrich Engels or Vladimir Lenin or some people who were just based uh, their studies on this Marxist-Leninist approach. Um, but if you're some kind of moved further, you, if you're already some kind of promoted to be a, uh, some kind of uh, applicant for writing PhD thesis, you kind of you have slightly more rights. So that way you can apply for uh, participating or some kind of reading in the special reading room of the public library in St. Petersburg, special Saltykov Shedrin public library, the central one, actually very good library. Uh, but for that purpose, you need to go through particular procedures. In my case, procedure was such. I was the assistant professor. Uh, I was writing my PhD, but I was also assistant professor uh, in the chair of international economic relations. So, and I was giving course on international economic relations, international economic organizations, and so on. And I decided, because I never read it, and I decided to read something uh, from the bourgeois economist, <laughs> so that is why. And I needed to get access to this particular room, which is a special, it's called Spetschrana, the, the read, reading room of special approach, special uh, some kind of permissions to, to get there. So I, I written a, a special letter explaining how it badly I need for writing my PhD to read this bourgeois stuff. And I uh, went with this letter to the head of my chair. So this professor has signed this letter. After that, with this letter, I went to the dean of the Department of Economics. He looked at this. Okay, so he signed it. After that, I went to the uh, vice rector of St. Petersburg University, which is a pretty high position because uh, university had that time about six or 7,000 professors and about 20,000 students. So that is why it's not something you can do easily. You can kind of sign a special uh, time. If he has his time, you, know, you should be there. So this anyway. is the third signature you needed. Uh, sorry? This is the third signature you needed. Yes, it was so, uh, signature. So he gave me. Actually, nobody gave any problems. So certainly it would be some particular situation. They say, oh, no, you, you, you are not allowed. And that would be finished. Fortunately, they all signed. And finally, I went with this uh, piece of paper to the head, to the director of the public library. Uh, also, he read this uh, letter in which I explained how badly I need to, to read. Samuelson, uh, economics, the basic stuff, the, as, as I remember exactly, it was a textbook of 1962 mm -hmm. edition. The Samuelson, 1962 Samuelson, edition. Uh, yes, and I got it in 19... 84. So it's kind of 22 years after uh, in St. Petersburg. And when finally I was given access to this particular room, uh, which was open only eight hours, the whole library was open for 13 hours from nine in the morning until 10 p.m. So it's 13 hours. This special room was open only eight hours from 10 in the morning until 6 p.m. So it was shorter. Um, and I went there and I found this uh, Samuelson Economics. It was only copy of this book uh, in this library, which means only one copy of this book for whole St. Petersburg, for whole St. <laughs> Petersburg region, and maybe for the whole northwestern Russia mm -hmm. or Soviet Union. So maybe the other place where Samuelson could be found, it would be Moscow. That's all. So in uh, one of the rules of uh, having access to this room was not having any 
paper with you, no, no any notebooks, uh, just with you that you can carry out of this uh, room. Uh, you can have a special notebook with numbered pages, and the person would check uh, on, upon your arriving into the room and leaving the room whether uh, all these uh, pages are in the same place, and you cannot take this a notebook out of this room. You can just make notes. It's possible, it's, you're allowed to do, but you need to leave this notebook in this particular room in special place. So that is why, uh, okay, uh, that was a procedure to get uh, to this particular book or similar books. Uh, okay, I got it. I started to read some else, and I was not very much impressed, <laughs> frankly speaking. I don't know why, but it just it did not impress me. It it sounds very strange, and especially in Samuelson textbook, there was a particular chapter about whatever convergence or some kind of about the importance of kind of have special relations with the Soviet Union. Soviet economy not so bad. It is it can develop very fast. I look at this. Come on, what a stupid stuff he's writing here. <laughs> uh, it's kind of it's, they told me about this bourgeois economy that is something uh, really cap, uh, dangerous, but it's really it's kind of. Uh, it's a, it's it's a, it's a very bad stuff. So that's why I was not very much impressed. But instead of that, uh, since I already get, got into this particular room and I found what is there, and it was not very much impressive, I went to something which was absolutely open and which uh, served to me as a very important element of my education, economic education. It is statistics. Uh, public library in St. Petersburg had a huge collection of statistical publications from different countries, kind of the regular statistics, kind of annual books or yearbooks, uh, annual statistics uh, for United States, Canada, Sweden, Germany, France, whatever, for almost all countries in the world. Plus, um, international financial statistics from the IMF, annual publications, monthly publications, and um, some kind of uh, on particular topics. And because it was mostly numbers, no, my, n no many words. So they would, didn't, they, the, the authorities did not consider this dangerous for some kind of for poisoning minds uh, of uh, Soviet people. So that is why it was open, because who would read numbers? It's absolutely <laughs> not interesting. I found it's absolutely fascinating because I look on some kind of concepts I found very interesting, money supply. M0, M1, M2, M3, what is it? I, just, I look into explanations because they have a little explanation there. And I look for numbers for each particular month, for each particular year. I some kind of constructed this time series. Uh, I look into what is the money supply, what's the credit emission, what's the budget deficit, what the national accounts. And I studied what uh, students in uh, normal universities in the West do study in their, during their courses. I studied through statistics that was available uh, in uh, from the Soviet Union in this library, thanks to IFS, International Financial Statistics, thanks to Government Finance Statistics, GFS, uh, from the IMF, uh, thanks to the annual statistics publications from different countries. And through that, just I got a basic understanding of the modern economics.